So I truly believe that staging area is the unsung hero of data pipeline and it does not get enough credit, which it deserves. Also during interviews, when I asked some of the candidates about the staging area, they were able to explain me why exactly staging area is required, what are the benefits. But when I asked specific questions that, okay, can you tell me some transformations which you can do at the staging level? The candidates were not comfortable or they were not aware of the solution that whatever kinds of soft rules you can apply in a staging area. In this video, I want to talk about the staging area in any ETL pipeline and specifically focus on five soft transformations which we generally apply in any staging area. So typical ETL pipeline looks like this where we have multiple source systems sending data into a staging area where we'll have staging tables and then we apply some soft rules on it and then it is moved into the data warehouse or a data mat layer where we apply the hard rules that is the business transformations and the end result is used for reporting and visualization purposes. A typical ETL pipeline, staging area is used to store data coming from various source systems. The data is loaded into staging tables and some soft rules are applied on the incoming data. This prepares the data to be transformed and loaded into final data warehouse or data mart stable as part of the design pipeline. So I truly believe that staging area is the unsung hero of data pipeline and it does not get enough credit which it deserves. Also during interviews, when I asked some of the candidates about the staging area, they were able to explain me why exactly staging area is required, what are the benefits. But when I asked specific questions that, okay, can you tell me some transformations which you can do at the staging level? And the candidates were not comfortable or they were not aware of the solution that whatever kinds of soft rules you can apply in a staging area. As part of this video, I'm sharing five common transformations which we generally apply in a staging area. And I think you should remember, try to remember these five because if you know five, at least three you can discuss during the interviews and this does make a good impact. The first example is about the date format. So you can standardize the different date formats coming from different source system. So in your data warehouse or your data mart, you should have a standard format for your date value. It should not be like you have different formats in different tables. And when you are joining those tables, the different date formats are coming and it will create a lot of confusion and it may even result in some technical errors while handling the date column. So say in this example, the source one is sending data in format YYYY MMTD. The file system like the CSV or the text file you are getting are sending you DD MMYYY. And then there is third source system which is sending you date in format of DD MOYY, which is 26 Jan 2024, like this. Now as part of staging area, you can set a standard for your date columns and you may decide that, okay, any date is coming from different source system, we'll convert it into a specific format, which is YYYY MMTD. So this transformations, you can do it in staging area and we generally do it also that if different date formats are coming from different source system, we set a standard format and we try to convert those dates into our standard format before moving it into the EDW layer. Some other common date formats I have seen is DD slash MM slash YY and YY YY slash MM slash DD. And from my personal experience, this DD slash MM slash YY is pretty bad format because when it says YY, it creates a lot of confusion. Right, so if something is like 56, you are not sure it is 1956 or 2056. Yeah, try to standardize a date format. The next kind of transformation you can do in the staging layer is for the string columns. So here you see, I, source one is sending me a full name, which is Peter Parker. Source two is sending me two columns, first name and last name, and the value is coming as Peter and Parker. And the third source is sending me name column with the value Mr. Peter Parker. Now all the three values are saved but they are represented in a different manner in different source system. But we don't want to keep this different format in our EDW layer as well. So in the staging area, you can also decide how you want to handle these changes coming from different sources. So in this case, I've decided that I'll keep first name and last name as two columns and I'll follow what source two is sending. So I'll keep first name in uh, first name column and keep last name in last name column. So when I'm reading data from this source, I'll make sure that I'm splitting this column like the first word, I'm taking it as first name and the last word, I'm taking it as the last name. Similarly here, if there are any salutation, I'll ignore it. And then I'll add first name and last name into two columns coming from source. Right. Similarly, the other column on generally which we do this is the address column because sometimes different source system sets the address value with the post board, everything club into a single column. Sometimes they have city in a different column, post board in a different column. So you may want to set a standard for handling such string columns as well. The third example is about what kind of values you are getting. So it is possible that a different source system is sending you same value, but it is represented in a different manner in the source system. So say I have a gender column where the source system is sending me value as male. 
The second source system is sending the same value as M. And the third source system is sending me a value as 1. Now, in my EDW, I don't want to have mail M and 1. All three representing a same value, right? So, I can set a standard value here that for any given string, if I'm getting, say, in this case, I'm going ahead with this option where if I'm getting a mail, I'll keep it as M. If it is coming as M, I'll keep it as M. If it is coming as 1, I'll make converting it into M. So, say, the values can be mail M1, female F2, not disclose ND3. So these three source systems sending me these three values, but I went ahead with this approach. So if I can apply a case system, if the value is male, then M. If the value is M, then keep M. If the value is 1, then convert it into M. So I can use a simple case statement to make sure that if different source systems are sending me the same value, but in a different manner, then I can convert it using a case statement and then standardize the value in my EWA. So now in my data warehouse layer, I will not have any confusion if I see a gender value is M. But if I have all these three values, it may create some confusion that somewhere the gender is M, somewhere it is male, somewhere it is Y. Right, so to avoid that confusion, I can standardize the string values as well in my staging. Moving on to the next, so the next basic type of soft transformations I'll say is, you can standardize the string length also. So it's like, there's a description column and the source one is sending, you can see how many words. There are too many words coming in the description column. The second uh, source is sending me a one single line, and the, and the third source is not even sending me anything. The none value is coming for description. So I can choose my own description values that, okay, I will use data is generated by and whatever the source system is sending me this data, I'll keep that on date and whatever date I'm getting this data, I'll just put this here. So this is about standardizing the string length. I can also do one thing here that I, I'll pick first 50 characters of the description coming from the source. And if it is coming as null, I'll put some default value like this date, data generated by source system or date and whatever is the current date, right? And then I'll load into my EW table. So you can fix the length of your string also. There are many columns like description, comments, which are like preformed text and the user can input anything. And we don't want all that entire information coming into our EW layer. So we can restrict it to first 50 characters or we can just generalize it with a single line comment and then use some parameters to make it uh, more meaningful. The fifth kind of transformations we generally do is we do a date boundary check. So if I know, say, here in this system, the source system one is giving me a creation date as 1984-0126. The other two systems are giving me 2024-0126, right? I know creation date 2024-0126 is the correct value. I know this. So what I can do here is this is the wrong value which is coming from the source. So I can apply a check that, okay, any data which is created coming from the source, the creation date is out of the boundary. That boundary can be anything. Say, for example, you started a business in 2010. So any data before 2010 is not possible in your case because your company was itself established in 2010. You cannot have any data established for that company before 2010 because it was not even existing. at So those are wrong records, the false records. What you can do is you can apply some date boundary check in your incoming data and then move such records into an error table and report it to the source that you can fix the data because I am seeing this data values coming and these are draw date values. So these small date boundary check you can also implement as part of staging. So here are the five checks I want you to remember. These are very common practice in the staging area. If somebody asks you, just don't limit yourself to the to what is the definition of staging area or what are staging tables. You should remember a few examples also to quote because this shows that you have a good understanding of the concept and you have also implemented these checks in your day-to-day -day work.